could very well be. I mean, that first showing of the tusk was absolutely crazy. And now with the brood mother just on top, I, I think I remember looking, I think they have like an 80% win rate or something with this brood mother, something ridiculous like that. It's extremely powerful. And I'm sure they're quite happy that they managed to get this hero picked up this early. And it's someone who can get on top of the drow and fights quite easily. You know, you just go through the trees or something, get on top of her and it's, it's up to the entirety of Reaper then to save the drow out of that horrible situation. There are ways to play against the Broodmother. Tusk is one of them because you can snowball and fall the, the you know, the, the damn spider. There are, you know, you can get like a Spirit Breaker to charge. You can get a Disruptor with the Glimpses also is really good. As well as the, if you can get a, sorry, the Thunder Strike, you can see you're walking the trees. There are options to deal with that, but you already started off with the Draw Mirana, right? Like now these years aren't amazing against the Broodmother. Draw a bit later on when she has, you know, the multi-shot, but... Mirana in general just doesn't do too much except run away. So we'll see what what Reapers decide to do to do, sort of keep their their hopes alive in game two. Yeah. So we'll see what we're going through coming up in these next bits. So Crystal Maiden, Trian, and Pangolin have been removed there from Neon, whilst Batrider, Marcy, as well as the Naga Siren. So even though they played it themselves last time, they just don't want to let Neon get that hero, and they decided to go for the classic Undying. Hmm. That's one of the things I think Undying, uh, Undying is one of Reaper's most plays here. Yeah, it's the Mirana, the Drow, and the Undying, as well as the Ember and the Broodmother. Ember Spirit's been banned, Broodmother's been taken from them, so we'll see what they have to, what, what else they're going to be able to take here. But Neon Esports, I'm a big fan of this Undying pick, you know? It feels like the hero's good in the laning stage, but against Broodmother, you don't, it's not that amazing, right? Like Undying Drow, you got some slows, but Broodmother can generally run away from it, Tusk doesn't care. Uh, Rubik might suffer, and then they go for the puck. Very elusive on Neon Esports. Uh, although it does seem like this Tusk is going to be played as a support now. And yeah, puck right, five four it doesn't matter. Yeah, it'll still do a lot of work. And now, obviously, the Rubik picked after the Undying. He's got to be really careful about those tombstones because that is a spell you really do not want to let the Rubik to get. That could just cause so many issues with your entire draft. Um, and they've also decided to pick up the Void Spirit there. So we've already got our mid lane matchup sorted. So it looks like it's just the uh, carry left from Neon Esports. Meanwhile, mm. Reaper, I guess, are still looking for their offlaner. Yeah, and uh, Viper as well as Beastmaster to come out. They don't want to give that give that over. Beastmaster would give it a little bit of pushing potential as well as the ability to just find the Broodmother with the Hawks. The BKB piercings would have been amazing. But Reapers, they do get rid of the Spectre for the global presence. And she's one of the best heroes to have against Drow, right? Because you press R, you show up next to her, you remove, remove her ultimate straight away. So I like the ban. And of course, Neon is a very global type of team. Mm -hmm. uh, Neon, I, I almost don't really care what carry they pick. I'm more interested in what Reaper picks as an offlane, if that makes sense. Because I do feel like the onus is on them to pick, get something crazy going. It's I, true. They, I suppose they do have the benefit of having the last pick. So they, they'll see what the exact matchup in that safe lane is going to be. And they can really cater their off laner to sort of counter it. I mean, they know they've got a Marana as their position for. So mm. ideally, someone who has like a stun or, or at least a route that can set up for those easy arrow lands and uh, potentially just dominate the lane. Uh, and I'm sure that is exactly what RDP needs after that first game. Like he had such a terrible start that he really needs to pick me up right now. Otherwise, he's going to feel so demoralized. Demoralized? Demoralized. <laughs> I don't know what demoralized. That is. <laughs> uh, and, and by the way, one of us is English and one of them, one of us is Arabic. And you guys will have a really hard time guessing who is who, right? Yeah. The, good Mr. Luck with demoralized. That. Yeah, they got demoralized. <laughs> um, I would just say Neon would take the Slark. I think because that's a great hero to jump on the Draw Rangers. But uh, Draw Rangers, sorry, it was banned. They take the Bloodseeker instead. Another hero, very highly mobile as well. And, uh, you know, it stops the draw from running away. All right, Reapers, they have a minute and a half to pick an off laner that can solve a lot. Mars feels pretty good. You know, there's, there's a Tusk that can snowball. They go with a Legion Commander instead. Oh, okay. Great against the Broodmother, by the way. I think Legion Commander is the third highest win rate. I mean, the pub scene is very different from the pro scene, but uh, it is great because you can just remove the spiderlings very easily. You can break the coil and then have someone and the LC heal a person. As long as, I mean, someone else breaks the coil. Yeah. Uh, just solid heals and you can just stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bloodseeker. I like the Legion Commander pick. Works decently with the Mirana. Although the, the stuns on Reaper, by the way, there's a problem. It's Aether Remnant. 
it's Mirana Arrow and it's Duel. Those are the stuns. Like, if you told me these are the stuns of the team, I'd be like, no, 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 no. It's okay. just, a, it does not work. It's not really the best synergy in the world, but I guess, well, it's what they've got now. Let's see how they're able to do it. Um, I was kind of expecting the Tusk to be five and then the Rubik be the four, but it looks mm -hmm. like that's what they're going to uh, stick with this time round. Like, I thought Tusk and Bloodseeker, obviously, you get the, the snowball connection, the shards, you trap people in for the blood right and it. You know, it's a pretty simple combo to land, but I suppose you could say the same with the Rubit. You just telekinesis people up, toss them back into the center. Pretty much does the same thing. So, yeah, Neon Speed mm. Esports, they've got a pretty decent safe lane there. I don't think it should really be, like, kill heavy this time round, unless people just misplay and, I guess, get put, caught out of position. But, yeah, we'll have to see how the lane actually goes. I just wonder how they're going to catch the puck with with this lineup, right? Like mm. Arrow, Aether Remnant, and Duel. And you're up against a puck and a Broodmother. You know, like these are not, like these heroes are naturally hard to catch with good lineups that, with good like catching lineups, sorry. But now you're up, you're up against this, It's it feels like a free game for Enryu. It feels like Ken will also be just impossible to control. Reaper's Draft, look at that, Grandmaster Draw Rager. He's way more comfortable on this uh, for Toy. So I do think they'll, Still perform a little bit better than game one just because the draft is more familiar to them. But Minia just feels like a heavy outdraft again. Yeah, definitely going to be a, a pretty strong one for him. I imagine it's going to be a fast Lincoln Sphere as well coming out from Ken because pretty much that duel is going to be the main thing that catches him. And there's not really any other spells that break it. I think it's literally just Soul Rip, isn't it? That's the only other targetable scale, uh, skill that Reapers have. So yeah, that, that duel will just basically never touch the puck this game. If he gets a Lincoln says. It, and then it's like, do I want to buy like a Heaven's Halberd so I can jump break it myself and then duel? And that's very tough. So yeah, mm. your point about the Lincoln Sphere being super effective for Neon also, it's it's another issue, right? Because that's the only BKB piercing ability you have on Reapers and you're going to need it. Mm. That they are. That they are. So it doesn't look like anyone's going to try for some first blood shenanigans this time either. Both teams just sort of setting up on their own respective seconds. sides of the river. Counting. And it should just be a two for two split, unless uh, someone decides to do some crazy stuff. One thing about the top lane, though, is that they could do pretty well against the Broodmother and the Tusk. Like if they can get a Tombstone and a couple, of, and then you know, level two, level sorry, level three, level four, five draw with the Frost Arrows, a couple of levels in it, then that might be enough to actually stop the Broodmother or the Tusk to, from running away. Like, yeah, they don't have stuns, but they have really good slows for the top lane. Yeah, that's very true. Ken, oh, he tried his best to try and take that bounty amongst four heroes, but couldn't quite click fast enough. But yeah, regardless, it is just a very even split. So, I mean, who are you favoring in a Puck Void Spirit sort of matchup in the mid? Who do you think comes out on top there? Hmm. You're giving me a tough one because I don't, I don't play mid myself, you know? I'm too old for that. Where the, it's like you're going up against a 13-year-old and you get stomped every time. You're like, this doesn't <laughs> seem right. Um, but between the two, I think I favor the Puck, but very slightly. Just because you can harass the uh, the voice bird pretty easily with with all, with both your spells. And, uh, you know, the, the voice bird doesn't have any way of blocking it. But for now, it seems very, fairly even. I don't, I don't think it favors one side more than the other. Chat will know, though. Chat, who is 9KMR and very handsome, I mean, they e will know. <laughs> Even if chat doesn't know, they'll make it sound like they do know. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of chat. <laughs> they'll do whatever. I suppose the, the one good thing for the Void Spirit matchup is that you can't phase shift dodge the Aether Remnant because you'll just get hit by it regardless when you come out. So Void Spirit's got that in its favor. Another thing is AI has better base attack uh, b thanks to the Quelling Blade. And of course, because you're melee, you're, you're, it's easier for you to get those nice and last hits off. There's no travel projectile that you have to work with. So, so far, Maid is doing really well against Ken. Like, he's having a very fun time against him. But let's look at the other lanes and see how they're doing as well. Well, we've got a new lane forming inside the uh, Radiant Triangle right now. <laughs> we've got two lanes meeting up, Gontry and uh, Tuskimoto. Is that how you pronounce his name? T T Tuskimoto? Well, so, sometimes you pronounce the T, and sometimes it's like Tsukimoto or something like that, Tsukimoto. you know? So I don't know, but we, you know, we should ask the player himself and be like, no, it's pronounced with a silent G or something like that. Like, ah. <laughs> Sorry, because of that. Oh, whilst we're waffling along, do manage to uh, nab a first blood down bomb. Again, go into Fortune Soul, just like game number one. But at least this time for Reaper, it isn't RDP that dies. It is his support. So, you know, silver linings and everything. 
Yeah, it's as long as RDB has a better game, right? Like the Mirana, as long as you know, if you can jump, you can land some errors, you're still fairly useful. But uh, Legion Commander, very similar to the to the Viper, right? You're not a hero that can jump in with a big Ravage black hole and doesn't matter what your net worth. Your net worth matters a lot with these heroes. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, and RDB, he is having a decent time, at least matching Fortune Soul this time. Yeah, very similar on the CS front. I think pretty much everyone's doing the same as their counterpart. I mean, actually, the, the person who's struggling the most so far is actually Enryu. Only on a 5-1 mm. in his CS. But I suppose the whole entire wave obviously did go into the triangle, so you missed that. And he is mm. still just level 2, so maybe once he gets like a point into the Insatiable Hunger, he can start challenging the, uh, the lane creeps a bit easier. Another thing is that, to be fair, Undying in the first few minutes while he still has the mangoes is very powerful with the max with the decay spam. But once he runs out of mangoes and he has no gold, you realize, oh, wait, he's kind of very easy to kill now and he doesn't do anything anymore. So uh, the thing I expect it to get a bit easier for Enryu in a little bit, you know, like next three or four minutes once once all those mangoes are consumed. Yeah, that's very true. So then we have a fight down bomb, good trade. Telekinesis chucking RDP back in towards the blood right and they find the kill onto Legion Commander and Hong Hong just has to leap away. So. I mean, we said he didn't die first blood, but he is the second casualty there of the game. So, yeah, slightly better than game number one, but yeah, not the best start again. Uh, you know, it's like Hong, you know, Hong is like, uh, I'll let you die. He's like, no, no, you, no, you first, then me, then I'll follow you, I'll do what I can. But a little bit unfortunate for RDP here. And he's got no points to press the attack, so they have no way of removing, like, the telekinesis, they have no way of removing the silence from the Bloodseeker. I'm interested to see why he wouldn't take it but maybe he'll take it at level four just so he can because i'm not sure what value you're going to get on moments of courage level two at this stage of the game right like one point in pressing attack could really help your team yeah. your, your lane out it's very true uh, unless maybe his thinking is the fact that every single time he's going to get telekinesis RDP? into blood right so he might not be able to even cast it okay just fast enough there to get out of the blood right this time round. But yeah yeah de it definitely feels like two points into the moment of courage is yeah, a little bit of overkill. Mid lane, May, May throws out the Aether Remnant, can take, is going to take a little bit of damage, but overall, much better lane for, for May this time around. They should hit the level 6 around the same time, and uh, Void Spirit feels a little bit more active than the Puck, just because you're not as ultimate dependent, you know, your cooldown for your ultimate is a lot less. Puck, 75 seconds, it's still very low, but, uh, you know, you, you will be able to have some downtime. That's very true. Yeah, mate, landing that Eve Remnant, like we were saying, the face shift not doing anything, and Ken's just been bullied relentlessly as a result. His bottle is completely empty, he's got hardly any HP or mana to work with, and still another full minute to wait for if there's going to be a rune refill. And uh, yeah. May just, oh, I, I'm loving what he's doing in the mid lane. He is showing Ken, like, no, no, no. There's not going to be a repeat of game one chasing him behind the, the tier one here, just making sure that he's not going to get free CS as well. And uh, I wonder if uh, Reapers will try to rotate someone to secure one of the other ruined spots, right? Because you're yeah, owning you mid, and you really want to make sure that he doesn't get a ball and just goes back, you know, gets a nice kill and suddenly he's back in it. Yeah, that's very true. I, I love the plan as well, where he used the Glyph so he could keep the creep wave alive and dive past that tier one. And as a result of that, it actually allowed the catapult to get within striking distance and, you know, did a little chunk of damage to the tier one. So chip damage like that is just going to slowly help uh, dominate this uh, mid. A little bit better. And actually... Fortune yeah. sold. Yeah. Oh! Man. Takes the arrow. Not bad. It, oh, well. That might be a bit of a jump for Hong Kong. Oh, just the tower hits. Just following him to the grave. Takes him out. But for, fortunately enough there for Hong Kong, it's not the kill credit being given over towards Fortune Soul. It is just like, you know, split bounty. And RDP just yeah. constantly poking and problem on Fortune Soul. But again, he takes a load of tower hits. Now he's pretty, pretty low himself. He's got moment of overwhelming odds momentarily, but... Ah, uh, yeah, Fortune so he got the last hit in time, so the kill threshold just wasn't there anymore. Oh, man, it was kind of looking pretty decent for them, honestly. Like, you're like, oh, you know, he gets the stun off, uh, and, but then he, Hong just dives in. RGB thinks, okay, I can go for the kill, but he loses half his health going for that. Fortune Soul, he's just, he just runs up to RGB like, hey, you know, this is my lane. Get out of here. Yeah, I mean, he's completely on his own as well. The Rubik has to run all the way back to base to regen up, but... I guess the way he's playing, maybe that's like making Hong Hong and RDP think, oh, the Rubik must surely be here. He wouldn't be playing like this if he was on his own. So a good little bit of mind games there, perhaps, coming out from the, uh, the old Bloodseeker. Looks like his courier will die. Not quite the best micro in the world, but it already dropped his items off, so it doesn't matter too much. 
So they're there for but Han Han gets the courier as well as gets the bounce here. So that's a nice chunk of gold that's for the whole team coming out right there. And Ken gets the illusion. So he, ha he picked up the illusion at the six minutes mark. So he has an illusion run. Might consider going top. Meanwhile, Maid, he's still in the mid lane here. But uh, I need to help his teammates in the top lane right now. Toy, he's been having a pretty decent lane so far. And Ryu has been kind of shut down. But it looks like Ken might change that very soon. Yeah, well, the, Puck actually decided to change his mind, Ken heading back towards the mid lane. As a result, made making a deep rotation of his own. Ooh. They do manage to find Tsukimoto. He went back just for a little bit, just so he can finish the power treads, but that minor delay was more than enough, and they do lose the, the Tusk, like I said. Well, so overall, this first, I'm not going to call it a rotation, but first movement here not working out very well. There's a deep ward for the raid for the dire side, just planted by Gondry, but Snipe takes the sentry, so Nia should be able to deward that very soon. Yeah, just needs the uh, actual daylight vision to see it there. Nice day. Yeah, Maid and uh, Ken just having a little bout towards the top rune area. Ken taking quite a beating for this. Ken Hong Hong land a perfect arrow, but Tsukimoto mm -hmm. makes sure he just soaks that up for his mid laner. I'm actually going to poke on some Maids. I guess the, the cool was there that he didn't oh, have any chance. Oh, he, he didn't go to the other side! This is caught by the Dream Core taking a beating here from the tag team, but with the uh, damage reduction there from the rest of the pulse, he's kept alive for now. Starstorm coming in. Ken is super low. Might have to uh, jaunt away, keeping his nerve, and he doesn't actually end up dying. Dodges the arrow last second, so nobody actually dropped him from that little engagement. That was that was a clencher, you know? You're like, holy moly, what was he doing there? <laughs> uh, but the infused raindrops keeping made alive. This item is toy. so good in the early game. Looks like Toy might just be dead. The Broodmother and the Tusk finding him in the jungle and look like it's going to carry on going for Gondry as well. Ice Arts trapping him in and the army of spiders just going to chip away at the zombie. One final hit is all that energy is going to need. Can he get it? Just so finally on the last hatch. RDP rotates in but just a bit too late to actually change any of the outcomes. And if he had one more point in the overwhelming odds he would have been farm farmed up the entire... You know, all, of, all of Broodmother's children would have been just killed in front of her which is a bit of a dark thing when you think about it but in the but unfortunately now he's got he actually doesn't have a point in duel at level 60 points for three points overwhelming also he wants to make sure he just lands against the spider but uh that might be easier said than done yeah i can see the i can see the reasoning for it it might work out meanwhile down bottom toy he's dead again they decided to change the lane sending the the drow ranger towards the bot but there was a level seven fortune soul waiting for him and now after this creep he's going to be level eight as well having an absolutely fantastic start two games in a row now let's see if he's going to be able to do, like carry it out just like the first one despite everything the ai thinks that reapers has a better chance to win they have a 63 percent it was 70 before toy died which is i'm like this is this ai it's it's, it's it's more drunk than we are right now you know it's like yeah give them yeah. 70 to reaper I, I think they can do it <laughs> that, that doesn't make any sense but like they're behind 3k goal seven to one now they've lost their bottom tier one tower already. Like, where, where is it getting these percentages from? Yeah, top. Uh, it looks like RDP trying to get himself out, but Ken able to keep chase. Actually getting some nice jukes in through the trees. Oh, how did he dodge that arrow? He was in the fog. Fantastic play there from Ken. It's going to allow him to carry on attempting the push forward, but it looks like RDP's reached safety and they're not going to press any further. Oh, I say that, Ken. Drawn into the other side of the Illusion Orb there. Focus onto Hong Hong. Got two charges still to work with. He's silenced up. Can he get the second one off? There is going to be the press the attack, but it doesn't matter. One final right click finds him. And now RDP is in danger. Hate was there with a the cut off. And a second casualty there for Reapers. Just not really on the same age for Reapers, by the way. Maid had the TP scroll from the moment that that began, began. Because I, I, don't, I, I checked, I was like, hmm, voice space, he's going to show up. But he did not. Like, he just continued farming mid. He's got the Agnum Scepter queued up. That's why he wants to go for, which is a pretty big, you know, it's like a pretty big item to go to just rush. You know, he's not going for like a Witchblade for some damage or a Kaya or a Yule Scepter for some save. It's like straight up Agnums. That's going to take a long time for him. It's going to slow him down. It's, it's a very greedy purchase, but I'll play yeah. RDP. Yeah, they're attempting to go on the Legion again, but there is going to be Gondry there. Drops no down duel. the Tombstone and that immediately is going to force everyone to disengage. So all Neon have to do now is just wait for the uh, Tombstone to time out and they can just carry on pressuring in that tier 1 tower. There is quite a lot there's of still no... coming in. And there's still no duel. Level 7, he, he took another... He, he maxed out overwhelming odds instead, going for 4-1 four, four, and 2. 
Which means that just now I felt like they could have killed Enryu because they're like next to the tower, next to the tombstone, but no duel was available, so. Down on the bottom lane, Fortune Soul tried to go for a solo kill onto the toy. There is gonna be rotation. Oh, he lands the point like arrow. Can Fortune Soul get the kill when he's popped hit? He does find it. He will get punished in response though, and he does die. So that's a good chunk of gold being uh, split between the two of them. And meanwhile, more fights going up top. RDP now going to get dive into his own tower. Rotation now coming in from Maid. Can he save the Legion Commander? No, he can't. He's still dead. Now also getting hit by the Dream Coil. And Neon are still hanging about. They want to carry on taking this fight. I mean, that was a stolen overwhelming odds, by the way. It did tons of damage onto Maid. It looks like he's going to be able to retreat. But then Astral Step gets stolen as well. Just hated fighting all the amazing spells this game. Oh Lord, Reapers! Uh, it, for the first six minutes, it honestly was a very even game, right? I think at yeah. one point, like even Reapers was looking really good, but the, ever since these rotations started, I don't know what Maid is really doing. I mean, he's almost got the same net worth as the Tusk, and he's rushing this extremely expensive first item, Aghanim Scepter. So, you know, he's not going to help you much for the until he gets another three thousand gold on him. No. He has to double his net worth, so. It's it's very it, greedy, like you were saying. Like uh, I think the Yule Scepter definitely would have been the better shout, because obviously you can purge away the silence from the Puck. There's the silence from the Bloodseeker as well. A hero like Void Spirit, if you are just caught up from that silence, you're as good as dead, pretty much. Like Everyone would just collapse on top of you in a moment's notice. So, yeah, you might get punished for that choice. Also, I mean, a, a quick note, the win probability is still in the favor of Reaper by 1%. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's how it works. That's that's just how it makes sense, you know. Um, by the way, in the meantime, though, Ken, he's going to go for a straight for Witchblade, which obviously is classic toy. He's going to go straight to the grave, though. Yeah, there's no way of surviving that one. Just so much reach and control. Even Gondry shows himself. Fortune Soul wants to go for the kill. Does manage to get the Tombstone into a really good location. And it looks like Neon not even caring about that Tombstone. There's going to Carol looking for more kills. Going to be the third picked up. I mean, do they want to try and farm the tombstone? It looks like Henry might send his spiders up there to do so. Yeah, he's just going to get some extra, like, 200 gold, whatever it is. 170? 150. Close enough. It's, uh, it levels up. I think it's, like, uh, based on the level. It starts at one, 150, 175, 200, or, or two, 250. Sorry, 225 at the end. Or, or it starts at 125, one of them. I think it's level two. Yeah, yeah. It starts at 125 to 200. So mm. it's a lot of gold. It and is. And Neon, that's, it's a little bit of extra, right? Right after they got two kills on two cores as well. Yeah, just more... I, I think this is actually exactly the same position that game number one was. 15 minutes in, 7k gold advantage in the favor of Neon. Um, so we might see that opportunity like in game number one where Reapers actually took a successful fight and swung the game back a little bit. We'll see if they're going to be able to pull off that same feat. But the difference is this time around, they don't have any actual strong team fight ultimate. Like the best thing they've got is the tombstone, but it's not like a big AOE lockdown or anything like that. Yeah, the lockdown in general, as we've mentioned, was not is nothing, right? It's, it's dual aether remnant and arrow, and two of these are skill shots. And the third one is very risky to use in this situation. RDP is gonna have the blade mail very soon, which is one of those items where if you're behind, it's still good. You know, it's like oh. He can do, he can shred me. I'll just blade bail it as, as long as I have more health than him. I'm still going to be fine. So it's, it's something, but can he actually land it? He still doesn't even have a, he'll have to start getting a blink dagger right after that. So mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm very worried for Reapers. I'm just very worried for them right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not looking good. Maybe the first game wasn't enough of a warm up. <laughs> Maybe they needed this to be like a, a best of five or something like that. And then they could have got the extra game into, really figure out what Neon are trying to do. And it looks like another engagement's about to happen. They've got the spot onto Fortune Soul, but it doesn't matter. Maid actually gets found out first, and that is a dead void spread. And a BKB just gets popped. Toy trying to TP out, and he just about makes it. Nearly getting caught, but at least he survives. But it's just another death of the void spirit, further slowing down this Aghanim Scepter. Not too bad for Reapers, honestly. Like, you're being able to TP out. Uh, your carry uh, for, for the first BKB. Oh, Fortune Soul. Yeah. Is he going to be losing his life here? That's a nice bit of slows coming out from... They, yeah. These guys, they do them damage. Sports are coming in, but it's not be fast enough. And there is the first duel of the game. 10 extra damage there for RDP. And th could this be it? Could this be the, the start of the little swing turnaround like we were saying earlier? They need a few more of those, though. Gondry is, I think he knows that they're chasing him and all oh, walks next to the war. That's it, he's gonna lose his life, I think. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he's sort of a tanky man. 
It's going to take some time. Duke's going to drive it, but I think at this point, it is all about just wasting time. Yeah. He doesn't even bother to, to, to TP out. He's like, yeah, I'll just die. Meanwhile, so he's farming mid lane. Although, is he going to be able to farm it for a long time? I think that Suk is going to jump on him. Yeah, Enryu coming into the back as well. Arrow off the mark. Toy's just desperate to take the tusks down with him, but he can't quite do it. Not enough damage. In comes Ken. Getting the grab there with the Dream Call, locking onto Hong Hong. He's out of leap charges, so he's 100% dead. And RDP can only watch his teammates die and run away. Interesting. And yes. Okay, another good... Something good for Reapers is that Maid is only 1,700 gold away from his first item, Agam Scepter, on the Voice Spirit. Alright, so... Uh... Yeah. Any day now! <laughs> yeah, he's, he's trying his best to just not get involved and farm up. That's really all he can do, going for this item choice. If he if he shows up before completing this item, it's just really a big grief to the rest of his team. So he has to just fully commit to the path he set out for himself. It just depends how long unfortunately, it's going to take. Unfortunately, two of the enemy cores already have this spells. The BKB on the Bloodseeker as well as the Guardian Grief on Enryu. And, uh, like, you know, Puck is... If you can get Puck in the spots, that's great, but... It's still a heavy commitment just to have... Like two of the enemy guy already counter your item before you even bought it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess the main target, he, he just wants to get on top of the puck, I guess. Because still so far, he's the only one that doesn't have any counter to to the silence. I assume he's probably going to be building a Yule Scepter soon-ish. Uh, see how long that's going to be. Meanwhile, the smoke plate is going to find the grab here on RDP. Everyone jump on top. He has got that blade mail, so it does cause Neon to sort of think about it twice. He's jumping for blade, doing a lot of area damage right now. Hey, he's taking quite the beating, but still RDP will die. Tsukimoto is probably going to be the next one to drop. Toy already dying there. The Broodmother just getting on top, and Fortune Soul just relentlessly charging at everyone they can. Buy back some two people right now, but the fighters are still not done. They found the grab onto Maid, locking in place, and he is just dead way too quickly. And RDP. He's got to get himself out. He cannot afford to have a dieback. Oh, that buy the buyback. He got nothing out. At least, like I said, he at least he didn't die. He's only about 900 gold away from the blink dagger. That will help him with some catch. But the economy game from Reapers is really suffering. Again, we for most of the game we're seeing that the like maid has just been barely ahead of the enemy enemy support in terms of net worth. Once the Shi commander has a blink dagger, your control does go up by a lot. So. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're playing for the blink back of Legion Commander, but yeah. you're only at 19 minutes. And it looks like Toy's just gonna be dead again. Jesus. Oh, he does get the gust off, and that's actually gonna be enough for uh, for Neon to decide not to carry and chase in. I thought they might have attempted a dive there, but they decided against it. Now Reaper all coming in. Do you spot Enry up onto the high ground? Hard to be. Maybe look to try and go for a duel, but he takes a ton of damage there in response. Nice blink dagger out from Hatred or Hated to uh, avoid the duel there. Could have been his death. They have the uh, mech on the, on Hong Hong, so you know a little bit of extra help help here. Well, Hong Hong, I say that I cursed him, dude. He, he jumps to his death. He's like, maybe if I could jump far enough, but it doesn't even. Steam scroll is not available, and he would have just been low enough to reveal him. So, uh, whoops, sorry, Hong Hong. <laughs> Proper caster's cash. Call him out, and then he just dies. Uh, he's he's got... got a mech. He can't be killed. Whoops, he died. <laughs> he's out again. He's gone again. Well. Now 11k Goldie, 20 minutes in, 24 to 5. I, I'd say, yeah, I'd say this is probably exactly the same point that game number one was. Um, they're pinging out RDP yet again by the tier 2 tower, maybe thinking about trying to go for him. Actually, they're just pinging top and mid. They don't know who the hell to kill next. They're just so eager for blood. They're like, anyone who walks out, we can kill. But now but we have too many targets to go for. And it looks like it's going to be that I'm dying. Yeah. Not, not quite living up to his name. No, well, he's, he's doing half of his name, right? He's just dying. Yeah. He's no. doing the Pi Lai Dai. And I was like, let me, let me cosplay that guy for a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> top lane, will they try to do anything to defend it? Where are we on the Aghanim Scepter? We have it! We no, have no. the Aghanim Scepter. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, they're jumping straight great. on top of the uh, Bloodseeker right now, but there is going to be the Snowball save, completely negating this. Arrow's even going to miss. RDP still dead. Fortune Soul using his own blink dagger to get the uh, rupture on top of Toy. And he is just stuck in between a rock and a half place, tossed into the waiting arms of the Tusk to punch him in the face. And that's just an easy two more kills there for Neon, not losing anybody in return. 
and they're going to be able to just go back to finish off this tier two. Actually, Maybe? the Reaper's still coming out. They want to try and take this fight. May gets hit by a silence straight in the face, caught by the Dream Call as well. The second silence is there. He's getting stuck into the side. He can't even get a chance to really use his uh, Aghanim Scepter effectively. He does just die. Hong Hong also dead. Forge so up to the high ground. Manages to find the kill on the Undying. And can just kill all the creatures to get HP back. And now they just translate it straight into a high ground siege. Huh. Not thing, to be honest. He walked into uh, you know, Vision of the Sentry Ward. And then they just killed him. He got the Aghanims to silence the enemy. And he's the one who got silenced by the by Kid instead. So... That's a little unfortunate. And look like look at that neon getting the first tier three tower of the game. They might go, they might be going. I mean, I say they might be going. They are going for more here. Reapers, they are guys are gonna be up in a few seconds, but will be enough to defend this melee racks? Doesn't seem like it. Oh, just see how it ends up going. Jump for his RGP does manage to get the dual connect on Sabruba, but he's getting pretty low. Can they actually bring him down in time? Not in time with the dual. Enru's going to be able to disengage. He's still pretty low, though. Maid wants to finish him off, but they finally managed to squash the bug. And now it looks like Sukibo is just going to be the one left behind. I, I say that, Ken. Jumping in, focusing on towards both Hong Hong and Toy. Just forging shots, shredding him to pieces, doing so much damage right now. Gondry only taking a few hits from Fortune's Soul before he ends up dropping down. And that's just going to be another tombstone to farm up. And now, I guess they just go back to hitting barracks. Like, it's a three versus two, but there is buybacks available. And again, jump in two man on the Dream Call connection. Made is just dead. Can he get a rampage? No, it gets stolen oh. from Ken. He tipped out Fortune Soul as well. He knew exactly what he was doing there. That is dirty. Doing his teammate day. But regardless, another GG is called. That is Neon Esports taking this best of two in a clean 2 0. What a fantastic way to start off the tournament for them. I mean, and like I said, they, this is the more established team. It was looking like they were going to take it anyway. But in such brutal fashion, two, both games combined lasted something like less than 50 minutes. You know, it was like 23 in game one, 27 or 26 in game, sorry, 23 in game two, 26, 27 minutes in game one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Neon Esports, 35 to 8, were. Dude, they, I mean, they, everything they did just looked really good. Reapers, the team doesn't feel very connected. You know, it doesn't feel like they're playing as a team. We're no. seeing that, um, you know, like. Like Gondry and and uh, Hong are doing okay, but mid but their mid lane mate he's playing this very greedy style. RGP is always suffering the lane. Toy is always getting not caught, so he's always being chased around the map. So very tough for Reapers. They're still a very high ranked team. They have they're all high MMR players. They're incredible, but uh, there's something wrong with the team chemistry right now that they need to fix. Hopefully by the next time we see them. Yeah, definitely. Well, they might have that. You know, there's, there's plenty more games still to come. I think there's another seven matchups for them throughout this group stage. So, yeah, like mm. you said, we'll see how they progress further into the tournament. Um, but in regards to Neon, I don't think they could have wished that series went any better. Like, they just... They had a clear plan of what they wanted to do. They executed their draft nearly flawlessly. There was only a couple of times mm. where they got caught out. But apart from that, very, very clean Dota 2 from them. And, uh, yeah, a much-deserved victory. Um, so yeah, that is obviously that series over, guys. Uh, the next series up will be Neon Esports again versus Spawn Team yes. this time round. Um, and that'll be about a 15 minute break. So not too long to wait at all. And then we will see whether if Neon can, you know, have a back-to-back 2-0 -back perhaps. Who knows? Maybe Spawn will be able to at least clinch one map. But I don't know. After seeing that series, Neon just looks so clean. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, but Spawn, you know, they they are, they've been matching Neon in the Golden Age Cup, so I expect them to go. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be one one, but I expect a much closer game in, in the second series. But like I said, Neon looking really strong right now. Spawn, they have their work cut out for them. Yeah, they definitely do. So do tune in, guys. Only 15 minutes to wait, and we will be back for some more Dota 2. So stick around. <laughs> 